Paul commissions Timothy as his successor. In this letter, Paul is first of all commissioning Timothy as his successor to lead the Pauline mission. Paul instructs Timothy to guard the gospel, that's 113, and urges him to join him in Rome before his imminent execution. But while the imperatives in 2 Timothy are strictly speaking directed, directed to Timothy alone, nevertheless Paul has in view all who teach the gospel and the scriptures. Chapter 2, verse 2. And the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men who will be able to teach others also. So every Christian teacher in the church should listen and receive Paul's instructions about this gospel ministry of preaching the word. One of the distinctives of this letter is that a lot of people are mentioned by name, including many of his loyal supporters. First, there is his opponent, Alexander, who has done him a great deal of harm. Then there are false teachers, Hymenaeus and Philetus. There are those who've deserted him, Philegius and Hermogenes, Demas and everyone in the province of Asia. But there are a whole number of loyal supporters. There is Timothy himself, Titus, Luke, Priscilla and Aquila, and there are other missionary workers, Trophimus, Mark, Crescens, Tychicus, there are Paul's friends, Anisiphorus, Carpus, Erastus, Abulus, Prudens, Linus and Claudia, and even Timothy's mother, Lois, and grandmother Eunice are mentioned. These give uh, a wonderful insight into the um, the sort of uh, team that Paul had around him. The second main theme is the imperative of guarding the gospel and preaching the word, of upholding orthodox doctrine and opposing false teachers and false teaching. First of all, Timothy is commissioned to guard the deposit. That's 114. The teacher's first duty is to protect the integrity of the gospel message from any compromise. Paul specifically articulates the gospel in 1, uh, 9 to 10 and 2 verse 8, and also by implied contrast to the heresy of chapter 2, 18. Paul is instructing the Christian teacher how to guard the gospel from false teaching. And this quite naturally leads into the second main imperative, preach the word. This is the overriding magisterial commission from Paul to every Christian teacher, even to every Christian. It dominates the latter. From God's first words at the beginning of time to the incarnation of the word made flesh to this very moment now, it is the word of God that creates and frames our existence and leads us into his great purposes. The teacher is therefore to f confront false teaching. We are to remind our people about the discipline required for the teaching ministry, tell them not to quarrel, to avoid irrelevant disputes and foolish ignorant controversies. We must use scripture carefully to reprove, repute, rebuke and exhort, always being careful to exercise complete patience, gentleness and kindness shunning the mistakes that come from youthful authority and always relating to those we teach with faith, with love and with peace that emanate from a pure and righteous heart. The third main theme is the teacher's lifestyle, uh, which is one of suffering, endurance, discipline and hard work. The uh, imperative in chapter 2 verse 3 is endure hardship, suffer for the gospel. Most of the imperatives in this letter are Paul's instruction and exhortation to Timothy that his own discipleship is such as to match the greatness of the commission and charge to preach the word. Timothy and all Christian teachers are to fan into flame the gift of God, that's 1 verse 6, to share in suffering for the gospel and to be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We are to continue in what we have learned and firmly believed. We must be ready in season and out of season. We must be sober-minded, endure suffering and do the work of an evangelist. All these exhortations are summarised in four short poetic sentences in the middle of the second chapter. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we, don't, if we disown him, he will disown us. And if we are faithless... He will remain faithful. The last main theme is that the scriptures are the God-given deposit of truth 
and they have authority because their God breathed. In the face of Paul's imminent death, the desertion of many who previously had been loyal to him, the destructive gangrenous teaching of the false teachers, and the active, dangerous opposition of men like Alexander, we naturally ask if there is any foundation on which we can rely so that God's people do not lose their way and are destroyed. And the answer is an emphatic yes. God has provided the scriptures, which are God-breathed, and which teach and instruct the believer about salvation through faith in Christ. God's word is not chained, even if God's apostle is. And God has provided in the scriptures all that it, the woman and man of God will ever need in order to be equipped for every godly work. Whatever the circumstances, every Christian teacher must always preach the word 